morning, Fremont Falcon. Today's Monday, October 25th. And this is the Fremont Newscast. Do you know what a captain is? Yes, it's a replica gun that shoots off little caps. That makes the sound of a gun, really. Second question. What's your opinion on the cap gun toy? I really, I really believe that the cap gun should be banned only because there's a lot of young men that uh, that are using it in, at, at school here, and they think it's a funny thing, and it's not a funny thing. I've had many former students that have passed away because of gun violence, and having that cap, cap gun uh, could trigger a response from outside this community or outside the, the school grounds. And what I want you guys to know that if you remove the, the cap, the, the red piece or the orange piece in front, it kind of looks like a gun. It's really important that you guys understand, leave the cap guns at home. I've had two, way too many former students that have passed away because of gun violence, and I just don't want that happening to anybody here. We just I think it should be, 30 years ago I think it was okay because people knew the difference between a toy gun, but now because of the prevalence of violence in our society, I think it's dangerous to have because it could be misconstrued as a real gun, and if a kid has it, he could hurt or hurt himself by someone taking action against him. So I think it's very dangerous. I would, if it was up to me, I would ban them, outlaw them, and probably smash them with a hammer. All over the place, but not for school. Inappropriate, especially in, in the era of school shootings and so forth and so on, and just general panic in the, in the public of people with guns and other uh, dangerous weapons. So bad. Hello, my name is Courtney. My name is Simone. My name is Olivia. Make sure to order your 2021 to 2022 yearbook. Creators start on October 31st at $25 on the website www.widelypay.lifetrust.com with the code 1236 on the website www.widelypay.lifetrust.com with the code 1236 the later you buy, the more the yearbook will cost. Hi, my name is Helena. And my name is Giovanna. We asked students what they're going to be for Halloween. And here are some of our answers. What are going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be Scream. I'm going to be Jason. My name is Ralph. Hi, my name is Dylan. Hi, my name is Helena. And what are you guys going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be Harry Potter. I'm going to be Scream. I'm going to be the guard from Scorpion. I'm going to be... Well, both space. I am, well, it depends upon what day, because I plan on dressing up pretty much the whole oh, week. That's cool. Well, what's your opinion on the dress code? I feel like the dress code has some aspects to it that should be kept, but ultimately it needs to be Um, do you think the dress code is fair? I do not think the dress code is fair. What's your opinion on the dress code? I feel like it's very biased, not in a particular way, but it's not really fair. Do you What's think the dress, dress code? code? The dress code is. I kind of look at it. Um, do you think it's fair? Uh, not really. How do you feel about the? Hello, my name is Kira, and today I'm interviewing Miss Nolan. Hello. Um, so our first question: How long have you worked at Fremont? I've worked here since 1990. So you guys can do the math. I guess this is 31 years. But I had a couple of. Uh, Times when I left, I took a trip around the world for a year, and then I did some job shares and spent some time down in Mexico redoing a house and um, spent some time um, with my mother uh, in her last days. So, but other than that, yeah, since 1990, so a long time. Wow. Did you go to Fremont? I did not go to Fremont. I grew up in Michigan in a suburb right outside of Detroit. So um, I went to school back there. How has Fremont changed since you first started working here up until now? Um, well, the fact that this is our third time doing this, I've actually thought about, I thought this question has just come through my head quite a bit. Um, it's a lot the same and it's a lot different. Um, the ways that it is the same is that there are kids like yourself who are here and who we care about deeply and want to educate and you know make um, wonderful citizens of our beautiful country. 
um, with a whole lot of curiosity and, you know, love. And um, how it's different is in size. Like, um, when I first started teaching here, I think the student population was about 1,600. And now it's under 800. So it's about half the size. And um, when I first started teaching here, it was a year-round school. So there were four tracks, the school was divided into four, and three of those tracks were always on, um, while one of the tracks was off for a month. So after that month was over for the track that was off and they came back on, another one of the tracks went off and it was a constant rotation so that the school was open year round. Um, but some other ways that the school is different, um, dances like school dances we had school dances here and when uh, the school first began the dances were in the evening for kids and then it eventually went to after school and now the pandemic you guys haven't seen those kinds of things another thing for kids was um, we had lockers like all kids had a big locker here at the school they didn't have to carry around these tremendously heavy backpacks um, and then for, you know, log problems, apparently, you know, uh, break-ins and things, they took all of those lockers out of the school. And there seemed to be a lot more activity, um, extracurricular activity, like I ran um, a drama club and we put on plays, and so those would happen in the evenings, and um, kids would rotate in and, and see those. And of course, you know, with technology, that's shifted things a lot at the school in that now we're on email, we're on, you know, um, we have a lot less contact with one another. And again, the pandemic has really, you know, put us in our own little areas. So yeah, it's a lot different from when I first started. Hi, my name is Cole, and my name is Yvonne. Today we're going to review the first club we are reviewing is Art Club. What is Art Club all about? Art Club is all about expressing yourself through drawing. Who is the person in charge of Art Club? The person in charge of Art Club is Miss Sweet. When does Art Club start? Art Club starts at 4 on Wednesdays online. So Miss Sweet, one more question. When you first started to teach Art Club, how did you feel? I have always loved art. And that's why I brought Art Club to Fremont. And I feel that it's a way for students who don't have an art elective to be creative. One more question. When you first started to teach, what was the first drawing you taught them how to do? I always start Art Club with Mickey Mouse. And we do a lot of cartooning at the beginning of the year. And then we move on to other types and styles of artwork. That's the last question. Hi, I'm Ava, and I'm Debbie, and we are here to talk about the PTA. The PTA is all about raising money for the school. Here are some ways you can help Fremont. Box Tops for Education, Amazon Smile, Browse Cruiser, Food for Less, Office, Park, and Easter. Hi, I'm Debbie, part of the journalism group, and this is Mary Love Gonzalez, our PTA treasurer. So, we have some questions for you about the PTA. Why did you join the PTA? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I joined the PTA when my son was in kindergarten at McCullough because I wanted to be more involved at the school. And I wanted to help in the classroom and I wanted to help just with the extras. I didn't really know what PTA was or what they did, so I learned that year. And then I realized how fun it was and how important it was, and I kept going. So it's been 10 years now. <laughs> how does PTA help the school? Well, PTA, um, which is Parent Teacher Association, so we have parents, we have teachers, um, we provide extras for the school and the students and the teachers. We, um, we kind of support and fund the things that maybe the school budget doesn't um, support. So, for instance, we um, do the assemblies that you guys have. We help with athletics when athletics is going on. 
we help with classroom extras if somebody needs something that's not part of the regular budget supplies. Um, we help the outreach program with um, items for the kids who are um, less fortunate than some. So we do a lot of that um, kind of extra behind the scenes work and it's just really important we think to, um, to support the kids, the students, the staff every month. Last question, why do you encourage, encourage people to join the PTA? Oh, um, well, joining the PTA doesn't mean you have an obligation to volunteer. Um, it simply is a support to us. Um, it is a type of fundraising, but, um, but joining just gets you kind of more involved, too, and, and gives you a little insight on what's going on at the school. Um, it also gives you a chance to be on our Facebook group so you know when things are going on. Like our fundraiser that's happening right now, it's our big fall fundraiser, and you guys have probably seen um, advertisements on Peach Jar and um, coming out on the Blackboard system. Um, but if you support us, it really helps us fund those extras for your kids and the staff and the teachers at the school. So if you see a Pizza Man Dan's fundraiser coming through, or a Buttercup's fundraiser coming through. Support us because we um, we need the support because COVID kind of like shut us down for a little while. So um, we're trying to build ourselves back up so we can help the clubs. And anybody was part of the baking club? Yeah. Okay. So the baking mittens and the um, the the measuring things that you guys that was PTA. We bought those for you guys. So that's an example, a really good example of what we do. So I encourage people to join. It's $6, and it's really, really helpful um, just for our, you know, what we do and, and helpful support to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. This, this, this week is the Red Ribbon Week. On Monday, October 25th, students are encouraged to run the 27th is wear black, sunglasses, the straight, the drug. Thursday is when students are encouraged to wear tie-dye. On Friday, the 29th, it will be fall festival costumes. Students will be able to wear the costumes. All the normal dress code rules be enforced as well as no masks, weapons, thick blood, wigs, such as during class, and no place of There will be fun ice available from 3 p.m. to 4 30 p.m. Hi, my name is Damien. And my name is Joaquin. And today we are going to be showing guys how to make macaroni and cheese. You will need six of these cups. At a medium temperature of heat, boil the water. These are some of the tools and ingredients you will need. After the water stops boiling, then you pour in the pasta. Then stir for seven to eight minutes. Then you want to add a little bit of butter so the pasta doesn't stick to the pan. Next, you pour out the water. If you do not have a drainer, use this method. Next, you add the cheese, butter, and milk. Next, we stir it on low medium heat. Turn off the heat, let it cool, and stir, and then you're done. Serve these bad boys on a clean plate. Our mac and cheese was a success. Serve and enjoy. enjoy. Thank you for